everybody just in time for relationship talk here on your feel good breakfast show of course everyone is born with a unique personality that is developed through either experiences your environment and inherited traits now when aspects of the personality become troublesome however to both the individual and those around them aspects of those difficulties can be grouped into three personality clutters which we are going to be exploring today yeah that is so true now we're asking the question of this which of these three personality clusters relates to you so we've got our clinical psychologist Asha Dulab in the building today to help us discuss this and also we're talking and taking questions and comments via our Facebook page so make sure that you're tuning in make sure you're chatting to us so that we can hopefully um, dissolve and and find some clarity in this the the questions that we have for the day but uh, Asha it's always a pleasure having the studio how are you doing this morning good morning I'm well so we're talking about me uh, well, well health we're talking about uh, personality traits why is it so important to kind of uh, distinguish between the different personality types, especially when we're using a sort of a structure like this? Uh, it's, it's more weighted when you're dividing these categories. What's the importance of that? The importance is to gain a great understanding. So, I mean, let me just give you a little bit of history quickly. So, basically, our personality types were categorized in, cl in three clusters. There's 10 types, and that just gives us um, a quick way to understand it. And at university, we were we quickly understood it by classifying them as the mad, the bad, and the sad category. Mad, that should be a bad, bad, and bad, sad. I'm mad, I'm sad. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we all are unique. Uh, our personality is what makes us interesting. Mm. It's also what um, distinguishes us and makes us unique as a, as a human being. And it's something that can evolve and it can change once we get some greater insight on ourselves and how to understand ourselves but even better how to understand other people mm. because it impacts on all areas of our lives um, our work our social interactions and all our relationships and our sense and perception of ourselves and others as well Okay. That, of course, is the theme for today for the relationship advice. How exactly are we going to be exploring those three uh, clusters? So we're going to be looking at exactly what are the characteristics, what are the personality types that fall into these clusters. And, of course, you know, we all have traits of these personalities. Um, and it's, a, it's about looking at when does it become maladaptive? When does it become, when, it, when is there a per per pervasive, stable pattern in one that is actually causing distress in one's life and in one's relationship. So we, it must be maladaptive, it must be a pattern, a stable pattern that we're looking at to say, this is now an area of concern because it's, it's actually, um, can, it's, it's an illness, you know, once, when, when one's personality actually causes us more distress and impairment than rather good and understanding it. Um, I think so quickly, we, there's many people that are going on to Google, Googling um, types of personalities, but there's a lot of depth and it, it requires quite a trained um, mind and eye to really be able to classify them accurately. Yeah, and I'd imagine also the way you're mentioning it now, you've got almost somewhat of 10 or more character types. We're just using a basic sort of filter to start that process of, of defining and understanding, but it almost seems to me that it's, it's dramatically important. I mean, I don't even know if this is a question or not, but just thinking out aloud, if I didn't understand myself, I could get caught up in being so naive to the negative impacts I have in my environment without even knowing it, I would imagine, right? Absolutely. That's why this, the awareness is so critical because if you are living with someone that has a personality imbalance or it's called disorder, it's very, very tough. And with that misunderstanding, it causes a lot of um, chaos in, in families, in relationships. And with more understanding, there'll be greater empathy, greater compassion and more awareness. And of course, you know, a, a greater sense of overall mental well-being. Right. Lots to get into yeah. on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And maybe you can weigh in which of the three personality clusters relates to you. Of course, Asha Dulab is here today to help us discuss this topic and also taking all your questions and comments via our Facebook page. Do connect with us, Express Your Morning Show, SABC3. We'd love to hear from you. It's my Feel Good Breakfast Show.
Yep, you're still live right here on Expresso, opening up on S3. And it's Monday, of course, so we're talking relationships. And today we're asking the question of which of these three personality clusters relates to you. Now, we're back with our resident clinical psychologist, Asha Dulab, to unpack this topic and weigh in with your questions and comments on our Facebook page. And we're talking about all things personality traits this morning indeed, yeah. Three clusters. We talk, let's talk about the first one, mm. uh, MAD, okay? What traits do they have and how do they approach situations in their life? All right, so the mad is, is you know, the odd and eccentric kind of personality. So they are, they sometimes refer to as weird, you know, but these kind of people are sometimes paranoid, so they're quite suspicious, distrusting of other people. They can uh, take offense very easily to remarks being made. Sometimes you can just look at them and they'll they question, why are you looking at me? Um, they're also sometimes socially awkward. Um, they, they withdraw from society voluntarily. They, they, that's what they choose, that's what they're happy with. So they don't find themselves easily able to go to a party or socialize easily. And they're very happy with that. Um, and you also get the other type uh, where, you know, people, they have their own kind of belief systems. They, al they almost have like their own sense of magical thinking. Uh, very eccentric in, in the way they look, in the way they relate to others. And again, you know, if it goes to the extreme, it can become quite distressing. I mean, can you imagine someone that is quite paranoid all the time, distrusting or skeptical mm. or um, suspicious um, in one's home? I mean, that will be very difficult to deal with. So that would be the, the mad category of people. It's like just the, the kind of oddness of, of individuals. Um, and remember, in all of these clusters, we all kind of present with all a little bit of each. Mm. It's again, what's important to note is that when it becomes pervasive and there's that pattern of impairment in relationships, that's when the concern is. Um, and then going on to the second one, which is the bad. Can I ask a question yes. just before we get into the second one? You're speaking about relationships now. Will it, will it balance out if a mad, mad person and a mad person were together or would it be you know, better for a mad and a sad or a mad and a bad to mm. be in a relationship mm. together? So it's all about trauma bonds. I mean, we all come from trauma and um, when, we, when we connect, it's about like, for example, a, a, a bad um, is more about invalidation traumas and a mad may be a bit about, um, you know, another kind of trauma that, that they, maybe abuse in their child and they come together, it's, it's all that they know and it kind of plays out in a relationship that can become quite dysfunctional. But if you have awareness and you get the appropriate treatment, you can actually resolve that trauma bond mm -hmm. um, with the correct treatment. So it is about, uh, again, bringing in trauma because a lot of these personality challenges are rooted in trauma and childhood trauma that evolve over time. And again, the awareness is important. Yeah. Let's talk about bad. Sorry, I broke you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, bad personality. Classes. The bad. So the bad is the erratic, dramatic, chaotic, emotional um, individual. Um, you know, this cluster is quite a significant one because we hear the terms antisocial, we hear the terms narcissistic, histrionic. Um, those are the, the common ones, the borderline personality, which we often see in practice as practitioners. And um, these kind of people, there's a, quite a mixture, you know, the antisocial is the one that, you know, there's no remorse. These people, you find, they find themselves quite often in trouble with the law. There's a lack of empathy. Um, they, they struggle to really, um, you know, regard anyone's feelings or behavior. So they often the liars, the cheaters, the betrayers, um, but very careful once again to just label someone as that. And of course you have the, the histrionic personality where they are needing the attention, um, you know, look at me, um, needing to be admired. Um, they, can't, they can sometimes find themselves in, you know, having spending sprees, quite seductive, promiscuous in their behaviours. And again, when there's a pattern, that's the alarm um, bells. And of course, the narcissists, I mean, that's quite common that we hear a lot of these days. The key word there is the arrogance, um, you know, the grandiose sense of self. Um, actually, those people lack self-esteem. And there's also a theme around this category where there's a sense of abandonment. So that's a, a quite an important theme, you know, abandonment, neglect, rejection are, are underlying themes to these personalities which are rooted in the trauma um, in childhood. And of course, the sad, the sad is the anxious avoidant type. These are people that we call, in, we call them the worry type. They're quite anxious, they can avoid people. Um, they are again also socially awkward. 
Um, it, it may also overlap with the first um, one that I described, but the, these people, they, they are finding themselves quite um, sometimes um, um, like, like they, they naturally withdraw from having um, any kind of interaction with other people. Um, and also with the, 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 the OC type, the um, obsessive compulsive, those people are very much rigid thinkers. They, they like to-do lists, checklists, and um, they can, it can go to the extreme where you know, living with someone that's quite rigid and inflexible can create um, quite a lot of yeah. problems in relationships. Uh, we really are tipping on the iceberg on, on such depth of personality, but um, you of course get the dependent as well. They cannot make decisions without checking in with someone else. And that also can create a lot of conflict in relationships. It's my feel good breakfast show. Yes, indeed, it is Monday, of course. So we're talking all things relationships. And today we're asking you, which of the three personality clusters relates to you? And we are back with clinical psychologist Asha Dulab to unpack this topic. So do weigh in if you have any questions or comments, head on over to our Facebook page right now. Very interesting conversation, a very deep one, different levels when it comes to this, but so glad we were able to connect with you this morning. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and I'm learning a lot. And just listening to you to speak about the three different personality traits definitely got me thinking that I had some alarm bells in my head because I hear you and I'm like, hey, but wait, I can identify with mad. Hey, I can identify with bad. And a little bit of sad too. My question is now, is it a concern? And when in this journey do I consider this to be an actual issue where I need to maybe address this? I mean, when does that point arise? Such an important question, Val, because we all do have a little bit of all of yeah. it. I can certainly relate to all of them, but it's again, like I said earlier on, it's looking at when it, is it causing distress and impairment, especially in relationships. And um, very often, um, personality is something what you call syntonic, egocentric, where you don't actually realize that you actually have a problem. It's usually people around you that was gonna notice mm. it and say, something's not right here. We are, the relationship is in distress or impairment. Um, so when you when you actually realize this is usually comes from another party it'll be great to start seeking some help um, they you know go in for therapy I think sometimes with certain personality um, impairments group therapy is quite important or also individual therapy and if it's within a couple couple therapy can also um, be very beneficial um, if there's um, if there's certain pervasive patterns that are evolving. Yeah. yeah, and I think just, uh, sorry, Jamie, but the moment that you mentioned of an external party notifying you of that issue, mm -hmm. it's easier said than done because often we have the ego helping us and saying, I don't do that, I don't have a problem, I, I don't minimize or whatever the case may be. So I think it's, it's, it's really a good point that you are making to just kind of be more open to those around you that are wanting to maybe offer yes, help yes. because it is help, otherwise Absolutely. why else would they mention it? Yes, yes. I mean, we need to be careful not to quickly label. I think so many of us go to Google and do these little personality tests and think this is who we are. But it really does take a trained individual to, to really diagnose this because just like mental conditions, uh, very often when someone comes in for, for therapy, you know, they may be presenting as depressed or anxious, but underlying that is a personality trait or pattern mm. that is in distress, that is causing impairment. And that's why it's important to look at that as well in treatment. And sometimes that is more of the, the issue the personality that needs to be addressed in, in uh, mental wellness or in illness um, rather than the actual condition that the person so presents with. Getting closer yeah. to the source. Yes. But we also speak about, you know, someone coming to tell us that is our personality shape. But I think when we mention it in the first thing, it's also about introspection, understanding who you are before just labeling it to someone else. Let's talk about other treatment options. You said speaking to someone. Is there a specific someone that we have to speak to when we do identify with one of the, the uh, personality traits? Absolutely. So I, I think with, with personality, it's definitely someone that's trained in the field of personality. Um, of course, psychologists, clinical psychologists are trained. Certain people have a speciality in looking at personality types. Um, and certain treatment models um, are, are, are more sort of evidence-based treatments for tr personality. Um, things like cognitive behavioral therapy and dialectical behavioral therapy. Uh, these are magnificent treatment models that can really help, um, you know, 
gain that awareness and, and really help with, with people overcoming these pervasive mal maladaptive patterns. So definitely um, also a lot of these treatments can be done within group settings, which is phenomenal for the healing process. It's just about taking that step to seek the help when you are able to identify that the, there are these patterns. I'm, I'm I also just want to say, I love that you mentioned that it's a process because it's not going to be happening overnight. Mm -hmm. It's something yes. that you have to deal with again. First, go for introspection, understand that, you know, you relate to one of these. And then again, it is a process. Absolutely. We do change and grow and evolve. And I mean, you know, a, a circumstance where you can maybe be angry and then you become aware, you could be an angry person, then you can actually become a much calmer person once you have the awareness. Oh, well, Asha Dulab, of course, our resident, and coming through with some incredible advice. So of course, if you do identify with any of these personality traits, don't be alarmed. Address it. Take your time with it. Really understand it and come to terms with it. If you do feel that it's affecting your relationship, then there are professionals like Asha that are there to assist you.